This is my dog Apollo. He's a one-year-old multipool who is enjoying life and he loves to play. Multipools live on average 15 years, which in my opinion is way too short. I want Apollo to live as long as possible and I'm pretty sure so does Apollo. I know a lot about how to extend my own longevity, so I want to do the same for Apollo. In this video, I'm going to share the research about extending lifespan of companion dogs and I'll share what's Apollo's longevity routine right now and in the future as he gets older. Dogs have quite a lot of variety in how long they're going to live, depending on their breed and size. Generally, larger dogs live shorter than smaller dogs and what they find is that smaller individual dogs in the same breed also live longer than the larger individuals of that breed. When it comes to the science of life extension in dogs, then it's in a similar situation as human lifespan research. We know something like the basics, don't be overweight and exercise regularly, but there are still a lot of unknowns because dogs still live quite a long time compared to mice or roundworms. However, I've looked at the most significant and impactful longevity studies done on dogs, and I'm going to share the results right now. I want to start with the most recognized and proven non-genetic methods of extending lifespan, which is calorie restriction. There are hundreds of studies over the course of decades decades showing that feeding animals fewer calories makes them live longer. The obvious question is, what about dogs? A 2002 landmark study took 48 Labrador retrievers and paired them up. One of the dogs in each pair was fed 25% fewer calories than the other one from 8 weeks of age until their death at 12 years of age. What they found was that the dogs that were fed 25% fewer calories had lower body weight, less body fat, lower triglycerides, lower insulin and lower glucose levels. Their median lifespan was also 1.5 eight years longer than the dogs whose diet wasn't restricted. So the calorie restricted dogs lived 15% longer. They also had 1.1 years longer maximum lifespan. And the calorie restricted dogs developed clinical signs of chronic diseases later as well. For example, by the end of the study, the calorie restricted dogs had 33% less hip osteoarthritis than the regular dogs. And the severity of osteoarthritis in the shoulder and hip joints was also lower. When it came to the causes of death in these Labrador retrievers, then both groups of dogs died to similar causes. It's just the calorie restricted dogs died later. A higher body fat percentage and declining lean muscle mass were predictive of death in both dogs and leaner body composition was found to be linked to longevity. These are quite interesting findings and although it was a very long study, they did appear to control for the energy intake. Basically at six weeks of age, the dogs were randomly divided into two groups. One of the dogs in the pair ate without restrictions and the other one was fed 25% less than that. So they all were compared to their own pair mate in the experiment, not some random dog. At 3.25 years of age, the dog's diet was changed from a growth formula of 27% protein to the adult formula of 21% protein. The dogs that were previously fed without restrictions were fed the amount of food that would have been for their ideal body weight based on their skeletal size and then the other dog in the pair was again fed 25% fewer calories than that. So it wasn't comparing obese dogs who ate however much food they wanted to 25% calorie restriction. The dogs who ate without calorie restriction ate the ideal amount of food for their body weight. And based on that amount of food, the calorie restricted groups ate 25% fewer calories than that. So this wasn't a comparison between obese dogs and normal weight dogs. It was a comparison between normal weight dogs and dogs who were fed 25% fewer calories than that. And across all pairs, the dogs that were fed 25% fewer calories lived about two years longer. Are there any potential side effects to this kind of calorie restriction? One of the worries is that calorie restriction is going to weaken the immune system, which then increases the risk of dying to some sort of infections. If you live in a pathogen-free environment like in the laboratory, then yes, calorie restriction would work in extending lifespan because you're not exposed to that many viruses and pathogens. Whereas in the free world, like the companion dogs, if their immune system is weaker, they would also die sooner. However, a follow-up study on the Labrador Retrievers found that calorie restriction attenuated the age-related decline in immune system function which was seen to improve survival. So calorie restriction actually appears to slow down the aging of the immune system, which is a good thing. One thing they did observe was that the calorie restricted dogs had much lower thyroid hormones, but they also had lower triglycerides and glucose levels. Whether or not thyroid hormones are bad for you, you can argue in like both ways. You could say, yes, low thyroid function is bad, but at the same time, low thyroid function might also be one of the mechanisms by which calorie restriction extends lifespan. We do find in humans as well that centenarians tend to have lower thyroid levels. 
else. So we covered calorie restriction, you don't want to be overweight and being on a leaner composition is better for longevity in dogs as well. What about diet quality? In this Purina calorie restriction study, they used dry food kibble, which you would think is not optimal for dogs, but the dogs still lived longer when they were calorie restricted. The dogs were also fed formula food, so the calories and macros were all controlled for, which is much harder to do with whole foods or in free living dogs. Their macros were approximately 21% protein and 11% fat, and the rest came from carbohydrates. Are there any studies on raw food diets on dogs? A 2003 study in Belgium on 500 companion dogs found that dogs who were fed homemade meals based on similar foods as the humans ate lived on average 13.1 years, whereas the dogs fed canned food reached on average an age of 10.4 years. Dogs fed mixed food, both canned food and human food, lived on average 11.4 years. That's quite interesting, but the problem is that this wasn't a controlled experiment. And as far as I'm aware, they didn't control for the calorie intake as well. Whole foods are generally lower in calories, whereas canned food is much higher in some of the sodium and other ingredients, as well as it's much higher in calories. So it's not a fair experiment to compare higher calorie canned food and lower calorie whole food, especially if you don't even control for the calorie intake. They didn't control for the breed either or the owner's socioeconomic status and exercise. I think it is reasonable to think that whole food or raw food is better for dogs than canned food or dry food, but there's also potential risks associated with it. This 2011 review outlined several examples of raw dog and cat food being contaminated with different pathogens and bacteria like salmonella. A 1993 study found that out of 112 samples of commercial raw meat for greyhounds, 45% of the samples were positive for salmonella, and feeding pets raw food has also been seen to transmit salmonella to their owners. Overall, if you have a quality meat supplier or if you buy the raw meat from frozen section, then you have less things to worry about. And carnivorous animals like dogs have also much more acidic digestive systems, which can kill pathogens more easily. I wouldn't take the risk of feeding my dog raw food from the farmer's market that has been sitting on the counter for many days. I would much rather use frozen meat because it hasn't been exposed to different kinds of pathogens. Interestingly, I have also found some studies finding that a vegan diet might be beneficial for dogs. A 2022 study looked at 1,200 dog owners, out of whom 357 fed their dogs vegan food for at least three years. The vegan dogs were found to live 1.5 years longer than non-vegan dogs, 14.1 years versus 12.6 years. These dogs were obviously eating mostly kibble, which is vegan. Another 2022 study looked at over 2,500 dogs, and the vegan dogs were the least likely to experience health problems. 36% of the vegan dogs had health problems, versus 49% of the dogs dogs eating conventional meat and 43% eating raw meat. The caveat is that the vegan dogs made up the smallest group in the study. Only 336 or 13% of the dogs were vegan, whereas the conventional meat diet made up 1330 or 54% of the study and a raw meat group made up 33%. So it's unbalanced in the statistics and dogs on a vegan diet might have more health conscious owners who feed them less calories or exercise them more often. Regardless, it doesn't seem that a vegan diet on a dog would be harmful to their health, and they can live equally as long or even longer than dogs fed on a conventional diet. However, dogs on a vegan diet ought to be eating well-fortified dog food that covers some of the vitamins and minerals you don't get from vegan foods like B12 and taurine. What about intermittent fasting or time-restricted eating? I grew up with many dogs in my childhood and we always fed them just once a day. Matt Caberlain has found in one of his dog aging project studies that feeding dogs once a day is associated with better health compared to more frequent feeding. The one meal a day dogs have better cognitive function, lower odds of gastrointestinal, dental, orthopedic, kidney, urinary, liver and pancreatic disorders. So it might be that a one meal a day diet is the best for dogs. When it comes to Apollo, then he's currently too young to do calorie restriction. We want him to develop strong bones and muscles right now at one year of age. But we definitely keep an eye on his weight and we don't want to overfeed him. Apollo's ideal weight is about 4 kilograms or less than 9 pounds. So we're going to keep him around that weight. When it comes to food, then he's eating currently a raw food diet because he appears to get allergies to kibble and his fur is much scruffier and less shiny when he's eating kibble. Multipoos tend to be more allergic to different foods like eggs, dairy, etc. So we feed him organ meats like liver, offal and muscle meat with bones. He was eating twice a day before the age of one, once in the morning and once in the afternoon, but we're going to switch him over to a one meal a day now that he's an adult. 
One thing that's worth mentioning, and I think that's interesting, is the balance between two amino acids, glycine and methionine. In animal studies, it's been seen that methionine restriction extends lifespan, and too high methionine levels might be harmful to maximum longevity. You get methionine primarily from muscle meat and animal protein. However, it turns out that's because of an imbalance between methionine and glycine. If you give enough glycine, then methionine isn't harmful to longevity. Glycine you get from collagenous tendon meats, skins, and bones. Apollo eats both glycine rich proteins and methionine foods. He eats muscle meat, but he also gets bony meat, offal, and organs every day. I'm not going to give him some glycine powder or anything like that, but I might consider supplementing his diet with some gelatin powder. Gelatin powder is just powdered ligaments and tendons. So this is one way to increase his glycine intake and reduce his methionine balance. Based on the animal studies, then a higher glycine to methionine ratio is good for lifespan. So I'm going to try to increase his glycine intake while keeping his methionine intake moderate. Are there any other supplements that we're giving to Apollo at the moment? We're giving him omega-3s because those are great for the heart, brain, and nervous system. There's a lot of evidence that a higher omega-3 status is linked to reduced mortality and greater longevity in humans. When it comes to dogs, then a 2021 review found that omega-3 supplements provide therapeutic benefits in dogs for allergic dermatitis, hair coat disorder, valvular disease, osteoarthritis, heart failure, and lymphoma. Another 2022 study saw that fish-based food supplementation improved inflammation and lipid peroxidation status in police dogs. So there are very similar health benefits from omega-3s in dogs as in humans. Because Apollo is so small and he only weighs 4 kilograms, we're giving him like a fifth of a teaspoon of omega-3s per day, which is less than 500 milligrams. There are currently no other supplements we're giving him except psyllium husk mixed with his food to support daily bowel movements. We also give him powdered berries like blueberries and cranberries because the polyphenols have been seen to benefit the microbiome, anxiety, inflammation and weight loss in dogs. He gets about a quarter teaspoon per day mixed with food. Food. One longevity molecule that we're actually planning to give Apollo in the future is rapamycin. Rapamycin is a pharmaceutical used in humans to treat organ transplantation rejection, but it's been seen to also extend lifespan in animals. It's the most successful life extension drug in the world at the moment which is why it has a high probability of also working in dogs. Matt Caberlain's Dog Aging Project has started to investigate the effects of rapamycin on companion dogs. In 2017, they published a short 10-week randomized controlled trial on 24 middle-aged dogs. The dogs getting rapamycin saw improvements in heart function without side effects. Another 2023 study on dogs found that those getting rapamycin appeared to show more positive healthy behaviors compared to the placebo dogs, but in this study, they saw no changes in heart function. Matt Haberlane is continuing the dog aging project and he wants to do more studies on rapamycin and dogs. I'm very eager to see the results of these studies, but it's going to take several years for us to find out what the results are. Apollo is still one year of age, so it's too early for him to start taking rapamycin. According to Matt Caberlain, summer at three years of age is a good time to start giving rapamycin to dogs. In one 2016 study on mice, giving rapamycin for only three months, which for a mouse is a quarter of their life, still extended their lifespan by 60%. That's very interesting, and it could mean that you don't need to give rapamycin to the animal for their entire life. For a dog like Apollo, a quarter of his life would be the equivalent of approximately 3 to 4 years, whereas for a human that would be 20 years. I think rapamycin has the biggest potential of extending Apollo's lifespan by several years. It's not obviously proven to do so yet, which is why I'm also waiting for the next studies done by the Dog Aging Project. Unfortunately, the National Institute of Aging decided to pull the plug on the funding of the Dog Aging Project, which is a massive shame, because the findings of these studies could also help us to understand aging and longevity in humans. There's still hope, because there have been many other donors who have supported the project, but they still need more funding. You can check them out at Dog Aging Project project.org. The last thing worth talking about is exercise. We're obviously not making Apollo do some sort of a workout program or resistance training. He's at an age where he voluntarily runs around and he plays with toys all the time. So he gets plenty of exercise and because he's so small, he doesn't need a lot. We take Apollo out for 30 minute walks twice a day, once in the morning and once in the evening. And to make him build strong muscles, we do take the stairs at least twice a day as well. Currently we're living on the eighth floor, so he gets a pretty good workout for his legs running up the stairs. He also gets a lot of sleep and he sleeps all throughout the night without waking us up. He takes a lot of naps during the day and he's generally very relaxed. 
those are all very important parts of dog longevity as well. So here are all the things we're doing for Apollo's longevity right now. He's only one year old, but because we started so early, we hope it's going to have very positive effects on his maximum lifespan. His current routine is very simple and healthy, just mostly meat and offal with berry powders and omega-3s. But in the next year, we're going to shift him to a one meal a day diet and we'll consider giving him rapamycin in a few years. When it comes to life extension, then the situation is very similar to humans. You have to be normal body weight with maybe a lower calorie intake, you need to maintain muscle mass with exercise, and you need to just stay alive for the next 10 to 20 years until we might develop some more powerful rejuvenation technologies. If you want to follow Apollo's journey, then make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos. And if you want to learn about human longevity, then check out my new book, The Longevity Leap. Other than that, thanks for watching this video. Make sure you click a like and subscribe for future videos about living longer and staying healthier. My name is Seem. Stay optimized, stay empowered.